In the crisp, wild air of the Alaskan tundra, history is layered under every patch of snow and rock. Imagine the late 19th century, when hopeful fortune seekers from every corner of America flocked north, lured by whispers of golden opportunity. The Klondike Gold Rush was not simply a search for wealth, it was a defining chapter of adventure that etched Alaska onto the mining map forever. It began with iconic places like Nome and Fairbanks, where pickaxes echoed through the silent, endless white. Generations later, the dream has not faded. In fact, Alaska is still producing vast amounts of gold, with operations like the Fort Knox mine shipping out more than 149,000 ounces in just three months of 2024. Yet, all this relentless pursuit is shadowed by the formidable reality of the Alaskan environment. 663,000 square miles of mountains and permafrost, cut by glaciers and rivers, blanketed in darkness for long winters or revealed by the midnight sun in summer. The sheer scale and raw isolation create obstacles of mythic proportions for anyone hoping to explore or expand the search for precious metals. Traditionally, finding gold here required daunting logistical feats. Teams hiking for days, equipment brought in by helicopter, ground surveys dragged across muskeg and through swirling snow. Drilling test holes or mapping distant ridges was not only expensive, but could practically eat up a season before a single glint of gold was found. But in our modern era, the age-old marriage of luck and grit is being transformed by a new companion, satellite remote sensing. This technology is revolutionizing gold exploration in Alaska and well beyond. Imagine looking down from hundreds of miles above the Earth, seeing not merely forests and rivers, but invisible clues, like signs and signals written in light. Think about it. With a few clicks and a properly programmed algorithm, Areas that were once accessible only after weeks of braving snow and biting cold can be virtually screened and mapped from afar. One of the first pioneering stories of this technology unfolded in the Tintina Gold Province, a mineral-rich expanse stretching from Alaska into Canada. The U.S. Geological Survey, or USGS, focused its efforts on the Bonnefield Mining District, a place legendary for its gold-rich volcanogenic massive sulfide and porphyry deposits. Using a single, carefully timed satellite image collected by Aster in 2003, a snapshot almost miraculously free from clouds and snow, scientists pulled ancient rocks from their spectral hiding spots. In thermal infrared, they saw contrasts between soft and hard volcanic rocks in visible and near-infrared, minerals like smectite, kaolinite, and jarosite practically lit up, outlined by computer algorithms that filtered for their spectral signatures. Suddenly, narrow bands of alteration emerged around old mines like Red Mountain, surrounded by untouched land that bore the same hidden signals. Not every potential deposit could be found this way, some were simply too small or buried under deep vegetation. But the approach worked well enough to point exploration teams to likely targets, making the search for gold a process of insight and prediction, rather than hope and luck. As the technology matured, so did the ambition of its applications. Enter the realm of hyperspectral remote sensing, a mouthful for what is essentially seeing in hundreds of colors instead of a handful. Where the rocks showed higher concentrations of fengitic mica, exploration teams knew they were close to systems rich in copper, molybdenum, and most tantalizingly, gold. This remote chemistry experiment did not just confirm existing mines at Orange Hill and Bond Creek, it actually steered geologists toward previously overlooked valleys and stream beds. Later, when they hiked in with boots and hammers, they found rocks and sediments with elevated gold values. The satellite data had become something akin to a mythic treasure map, 
Only this one was drawn in infrared and written in wavelengths. The story does not end with new discoveries. In fact, Alaska's gold legacy sometimes extends into the past, where old mines, long closed and quietly fading into the forest, still hold potential. In 2025, a remarkable study used ultra-high-resolution world imagery satellites to look back at the impact of a century of mining. By painstakingly tracing the scars left on 748 historical sites, scientists mapped over 734 square kilometers of land disturbed by mining, including enormous piles of waste tailings. Astonishingly, over 214 square kilometers of this wasteland was created by gold mining alone. But this haunting record serves a new purpose. With modern analytical techniques, these old waste piles can become gold mines for a second time. By reprocessing tailings that were once dismissed as worthless, miners can extract fresh value, cleaning up the environment while reigniting economic engines across rural Alaska. This approach, finding opportunity in the legacy of the past, demonstrates the breadth of what satellite data can achieve when paired with innovative thinking. Mining companies, always looking for an edge, have quickly adopted these space-borne tools. Trilogy metals, for instance, used satellite topographic mapping to survey huge swaths of its Ambler district, adjusting plans for gold, copper, and zinc extraction. Panther Minerals relied on satellite imagery for its Boulder Creek property. Even startups and smaller players jumped in. CC Explorations developed algorithms that scan for gold deposits worldwide, and by 2025, hyperspectral technology could reliably identify more than 50 minerals linked with gold from orbit. The result? Exploration costs slashed by as much as 90% in the earliest stages Drilling that is more accurate and focused, and unparalleled access to remote, once inaccessible land. Not only does this save money and time, it minimizes environmental disturbance, an ever-growing concern in a rapidly warming Arctic. For Alaskans, gold mining has long been a symbol of economic resilience, but now, with satellite data, it can be a leader in sustainable development finding harmony between resource extraction and environmental stewardship. Of course, no technology is without its limitations. Clouds, atmospheric haze, dense vegetation, and long winters of darkness can all interfere with the satellite's view. Spatial resolution, how sharp the satellite's image is, matters immensely, and sometimes the smallest, richest veins are concealed beneath tangled wilderness or deep snow. This is where integration is key. Drones, unmanned aerial vehicles, can collect data at lower altitudes, AI can sharpen images and predict likely alterations, and ground surveys can be targeted with surgical precision. Academic institutions like the University of Alaska Fairbanks are spearheading collaborations, blending remote sensing with geochemical studies to make maps ever more accurate. Their research focuses especially on critical minerals, essential for technology and national security, such as antimony and copper, but these advances benefit gold hunters as well. Looking to the future, new satellite missions like NASA's Hispiri and Europe's NMAP promise even sharper eyes increased spectral resolution and faster updates, meaning Alaska's unexplored corners could soon become virtual open books for the next generation of mineral explorers. At this pivotal moment in the story of Alaskan gold, the role of Pharmanaut stands out as transformative. Founded with a vision to democratize the immense power of satellite data, Pharmanaut bridges the gap between cutting-edge science and practical, everyday mining. The company's mission echoes the pioneering spirit of the gold rush, but with the technology of tomorrow. Pharmanaut provides platforms, not just for tech giants or government agencies, but also for independent geologists, small companies, and communities. Through accessible apps, 
web portals, and flexible APIs. What makes Pharmanaut unique is its integration of artificial intelligence, geospatial information, and even blockchain, distilling raw satellite data into logical, actionable insights. Their work mapping gold prospects in Mauritania or targeting rich mineral belts in Tanzania, Nigeria, South America, and Kenya proves that the future of mining is not limited by geography, size, or budget. It belongs to those who harness the best tools wherever they are. In Alaska, this could mean a new generation of clean, high-yield mining, where even legacy sites are rejuvenated without repeating the environmental losses of the past. As the world's demand for gold continues to climb, driven by technology and global finance, satellite-driven exploration, now within reach for all, is ensuring that Alaska's mining legacy will not merely continue, but will thrive in ways those first prospectors could never have imagined. With companies like Farmanaut at the helm of this new gold rush in the sky, the wild frontiers of Alaska remain, as ever, a land of possibility, now shining brighter than ever beneath the watchful eyes of space.